It's worth it. It's worth it. Say that. It's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth it. Hallelujah. You can be seated. And what can I bring to you? Simply a song of love and boundless gratitude. My whole life to you. I like that part where he says that. Had I king or had I riches, I would bring them. Had I kingdoms, I would lose them. Had I the world, too small a gift. Praise God. He said, too small of a gift. Too small. I always hear people say this a lot. They say, you know, I want to die for you, Lord. I want to die for you, Jesus. What about living for him? He don't need you to die for him. He needs somebody to live for him. <clears throat> It'd be easy to walk out there and die for him. But why don't you get filled up? And get right and live for Jesus. There's a difference. I don't know about you, but I'm going to live for Him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to say this. I want to... I want to give you a chance to worship and tithe and an offering. Those of you that don't know, those of you that's on the internet, we've got text to give, a new avenue that you can use to worship in your giving and your time or your, your, your money. And, and, and I'll say this, that new creation life is good ground. Okay? This is good ground here. And we're kingdom-minded, and we're about advancing the kingdom of our God. Our ministry is reaching out into the flames and reaching out into it and pulling those out of the, the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Amen. And God always reminds me of this, and I want to remind you of this, because it's easy to lose focus and lose vision if you're not careful. And that's my responsibility to keep that vision clear to you. To keep that vision cast for you that we can go after the hope that is set before us. If you have no hope, you have nothing to live for in life. If you have nothing to go after, you are dying. You are existing. He said the hope that was set before us. Paul said... I count all things but dung. I count all things but loss for the excellency to gain and to win Christ. To win Him is my goal. To stand approved before God are to be your goal every day of your life. I'm not talking about waiting until Sunday. I'm talking about every moment that you wake up, every day that you get up, every day it ought to be to please Him. Every day it ought to be to at the end of the day that you can stand before God and say, Lord, do I stand approved before you today? Did I make you happy? Did I, did I do what I was supposed to do today? If not, then I repent. And I ask you to forgive me of those things. And I get back in line where I need to be. A lot of spiritual pride these days that don't want to come under authority. A lot of spiritual pride in the churches. Give them a little bit of lead way and they want to rise up. But you got to just tap them down a little bit. Tap them down. Get under authority. Get under the covering. Get under a little bit. Down, down, down. You know the little bulldog. Remember that little bulldog that want to jump up and he want to jump up? Down, boy. Down, boy. Down. If 
you're under authority, you have authority. If you're not under authority, you have no authority. Amen. And I'll say this to you all because it's scriptural. If you don't serve an anointing, you'll never carry one. See, see, God's kingdom works different than the world's way. The world's way is dog eat dog, fight you, get what I have to get. I'm going to get it how I live. You get it how you live. I'm going to take what I can take. That's the world's way. The kingdom works totally opposite of that. The, the kingdom works, it says, humble yourself, and then he'll exalt you in due time. But if you exalt yourself, you're going to be abased and rebuked and brought down. The way up in the kingdom is down. The way to live is to die. The way, the, way, the, way, the way to serve God is to surrender. You, you, if you're trying to do everything on your own strength, you're, you're, you're missing the point of what this is about. It's about me making myself available and surrendering and letting Him wholly fill me and say, Lord, use me. Not for my glory, but for your glory. That's why Paul said this, I die daily. I die every day. I crucify the flesh. Every single day I have to die. I have to die to my own wants, to my own needs, to my own desires. I have to die to all that. Surrender to God and let you wholly fill me. He's not, he's there, but what I'm saying, Lord, I surrender to you wholeheartedly to use me. Is that helping anybody today? And I'm just going to minister to you for a second, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a chance to worship, but... What I mean is, is this is good ground to sow into. If, if, you want to, if you want to prosper in life, get with a preacher. Get with somebody that's preaching the gospel, that's doing something for the kingdom. Get in line with what they're doing. Put your time, your money, and your effort into what they're doing, and I guarantee you, that's how you're going to prosper God's way. You go out and do it your own way, and that's all you're ever going to do is your own way. But when you get in line with what God's doing, He's going to get in line with what He's doing through you. Amen. You know, you know I'm going I'm to share this for, for people in business and stuff. I'm going to share this with you. They said the children of the world were wiser than, or the, 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 the children of the world were wiser than the children of light. Why did Jesus say that? And I'm going to share this with you. And, and, the, and, and our, our, our Pastor Ron said this, and they're out in California. And he said, them big companies, he said they're within about driving distance from the Fortune 500 countries, the richest companies in all of the world. He said they got so much money they don't know what to do with it. They just funnel it out everywhere because they got so much money coming in. Children of the world, why are they so rich in the, in, in the, in the, the money and, and wealth? He said that them companies, he said that the people that is in the church, now listen to this, here's your principle to live by. You want to prosper in your business. Everybody that works for their company that's a part of that church they go to them, and whatever tithe that they have coming into the church, they match it. They find out what they're tithing to the house of God. These are heathens. They find out what they're tithing, and then they take their money and they match it to the church. They give it to the church. They get it. And they ain't even saved. And they got so much money coming in, they don't know what to do with it. They had to build their own banks just to put the money in. Because there's so much money coming in. You say, why are you talking about money, Pastor? Because I'm always going to talk about your money. Because it has a hold of so many people. If they would learn to get it, you're a child of God. All that's His is yours. He... Jesus said, it's my overwhelming desire to give you the kingdom. Here, the children of the world are wiser than you are. They're using the keys and opening things in the, in, the, in, the, in the world and in the earth and funneling things that you should be doing and funding the gospel and funding the kingdom and building the schools and building what I'm telling you to build. But we want to get stuck in this closed-mindedness with these little closed-in minds like we're just like right here in this little box. Oh, God, he's asking for money. He's talking about money. We need to get out of that mentality. Get in with God. Start serving God. Allow him to use us. And let's accomplish something in this world for the kingdom of our God. 
He said this, he said to give and it would be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, cup running over, shall men begin to give unto your bosom. How are you ever going to outgive God? When you get this in your life, your life will be forever changed. Your money will be forever changed. Your life will be forever changed. Your relationship with God will be forever changed. Because I'm going to tell you, whatever I can, I can sit down with you for a minute and talk to you, and all i got to do is talk about your finances, and you tell me where it's going. And I can sit, you just line it out for me, and I'll tell you exactly where your heart is. You say, how's that, Pastor? I'll tell you exactly where it is. I ain't got to talk about it. No, I don't care about the good deed. Tell me where your money's going. Show me where your money's at. And I'll show you where your heart's at. I'm just getting that. I didn't have none of that planned. Why? Because he said where your treasure is, there your heart's going to be. Whatever you're focused on, whatever your drive is, whatever your, whatever your heart is led to in the, in the world, that's where everything's going to go towards. Yet we've got this mixed up mentality like the house of God just nonchalantly. We don't care about the things of God. All we want to do is talk about them. All we want to do is talk about what they're doing. Talk about the offering. Talk about the tithe. Talk about all this stuff. While, while you go to Walmart and you help them prosper and you spend all your money in there so your children can have stuff, so they can have clothes while they put out their demonic stuff and they indoctrinate your children. They got books that they've put out from the Walmart. I can prove it on the internet right here. You sit here right afterwards and I will pull it up for you. Teaching your kids how to worship Satan. Teaching your kids how to get in and have seances in a children's book. In a children's book on their level so they can understand how to do it. See, one thing you'll learn about this man of God, I'm a man of God. I'm going to preach to you whether you love me or whether you don't. Like I told them before, one of the two is going to have to happen and this is the way it's going to be. You're going to hate me or you're going to love me. I'm not going to let you stay in between. You're going to make a choice with me. I want you to love me and I love you. But we need to be in a black and white way. You know, black and white society, black and white church. You know, we either in or we out. We either, we either there or we're not. We're, we're, we we got to make a choice sometime in my life. Look, I'm either going to go for God or I'm not. I'm going to give it all I got or I'm not going to give it nothing. Well, brother, I picked up my cross years ago. And I made a commitment. My heart's set. My mind's made up. I'm going on with Jesus. I'm going to chase Him with everything that's within me. Can I preach for a moment? Amen. Trying to help us, church. I'm trying to break this poverty mentality, these things that we've got in the church. Because, see, you know what? In a few years, you're going to look back. We're going to look back at, at, at all this that, I was, that, that was happening here. Y'all going to look around, and we ain't going to be able to believe what God has done. You're going to be sitting there in the church and you're going to be, we're going to be like, we're going to be looking at each other and we're going to be like, that was you last year, you know, years ago. I can't believe it. Pastor, look, you've been transformed. My God. Brother, you've been transformed. My God. Look at these children. Look at this. Look, we're, we're God. Only Jesus could do this. I'm a faith man. I preach faith. I preach prosperity. Amen. I can say that. I do preach prosperity. Why? How would you not? I'm not talking about the devil's prosperity. I'm talking about God's way. How could you live with God and serve God and not prosper? Not succeed in reaching? How could you ever do that? What kind of God are you talking about? I'm talking about creator of heaven and earth that spoke the world into existence. That said man be, man was. Created him out of the dust of the ground. Formed man said, I'm going to breathe into his nostrils. Man come alive. Man become a living soul. I'm talking about creator that, that formed the, 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 the mountains. That weighed them in the balances. That owns the cattle of a thousand hills. That the, the, the street, he says, is, is pure gold, like translucent gold. The 
See, a lot of people hear me say that, and you think I'm talking about running after the riches. I'm talking about running after Jesus. I'm talking about like he told Adam. He said, subdue the land. You know what subdue there means? Let me, let me explain what subdue means. Study that out in the Greek or the Hebrew. Study subdue. When he told him, have dominion, subdue the land. You know what he meant? Take the earth's resources and use the earth's resources that I've put here. Use the knowledge that I've given you to put these resources in the right way so they can help you serve man and serve me better. See, I'm not serving the things. He said to subdue it and take those things and take everything that the earth provides and use it to accomplish my will. The things are to serve us and to help us serve God and to serve man. We're not to serve them. You don't serve money. Money serves you. Say that. Say money serves me. Where have you ever met a king that served money? The king says do and it, it's done. The king says go and it's God. The king says and it's good. It's there. I'm setting foundation in you. I'm laying foundation in you. That way when this tree does get up and this tree starts to really, you got a foundation in you. And God can do anything with you because He can trust you. As she ministered to us earlier, she said, you know what? There's, in Malachi, when you start, start studying that out, when he was rebuking the priest, it's because the priest wasn't teaching the people. We got a lot of that today. They live high on the hog, but they don't teach the, they don't teach the, they suck the money out of everybody, but they don't teach them how to do it. They don't teach them how to come up God's way. They don't teach them how to, how to obey God with tithes and offerings and things like that that's going to release more of God and more of the anointing in their lives. They don't teach them. They're called false prophets because they rob the people. They rob them of ever going any further with Jesus ever growing in the anointing and what you got is a surface level Christianity with a bunch of babies that can't get the they couldn't get a tick off of you with their prayers they would run ten different prayer lines and might get lucky that one of them has enough faith to get and I'm not mad at anybody but I'm telling you something because I'm breaking down some ways of thinking here I told you I'm going to come against everything that you've ever thought I'm going to challenge everything that you ever believed I'm going to make sure and challenge it with this word of God why? Because it's the Word of God. And the Word of God is true. And they rob the people. Yet they suck all the stuff, but they rob them of the chance. Because they never give them the knowledge of the truth and lead them into the... Whether they don't know, or whether they do it maliciously, or whether they're cowards. I don't know. I don't know. But this has proven very effective. And we want you to prosper God's way. Not the world's way. God's way. Say that. God's way. God's way. He said give and it will be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Cup running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Men give to me. I'm saying people give to me everywhere I go. But I'm a giver. I don't sit and look for the handout. I'm looking at a place to be generous. I'm looking at a. See that's the difference. This is the difference in my heart. I don't look, I don't, I'm expecting a return, but I don't go everywhere thinking, man, I hope they give me this. Man, I hope they... I don't live that way, brother. That's a bondage and a slavery. I live like this. Lord, what do you want me to do? I go to this place, what can, how can I be a blessing? What do you want me to sow? What do you want me to give? I'm looking for an opportunity to be a blessing. I'm looking for an opportunity to put some money somewhere. I'm looking for an opportunity to reach out a helping hand. I'm, re I'm looking for an opportunity to speak a kind word. I'm looking for an opportunity to reach down and lift somebody up. It ain't just about the money. I'm saying I live my life to be a blessing. I live my life to give. I live my life to sow. See, that's the difference, honey. And then I know the word says this, that it'll come back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, cup running over. It'll start coming and it'll keep coming. Anything that I have need of, my God supplies all my needs according to 
his riches and glory. See, I got the faith in his word. I'm not looking to suck you out of something. What I'm doing is, is listening to obey God and be a blessing. And my heart's pure before him because I now I'm just a giver and I'm a sower. And it just keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. And I just keep funneling, keep funneling, keep funneling, keep going, keep going, keep doing, keep doing, keep going, keep worshiping. Praise God. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Praise God. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Praise God. Hey man, we're going to accomplish God's will. I don't care if it hair lips ever a person in White County. Praise God. We're going to accomplish the will of God at New Creation Life. We're going to accomplish it and all they're going to do is sit back and they're going to look at your life and all they can say is God has to be real. Praise God. This God has to be real. This Jesus that they talk about, this Jesus of Nazareth has to be real. Praise God. Not this person. Praise God. <laughs> You step out to be a faith man. Step out to be obey God and do what God says to do. Watch what people say about you. Huh. Huh. They were talking about me when I was doing drugs. Huh. Now you want to talk about me because I'm serving God? Now you want to talk about me? Praise God. Hey, line up. Line up and get your notes out. Take a note, take a sticker and get in line. That's all I know to tell you. Praise God. I'm not mad at you. I love you. And you can't ever make me not love you. I didn't say I hung out with you. I said I love you. I said some of my love from a distance, see. Some you love up close. Some you love at a distance. Some you keep at an arm's length from you. That's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I still love you. <laughs> I got to keep my heart right, brother. I got I to gotta keep pure. I got to keep pure. I got to keep... <laughs> I've got to keep my hands clean. <laughs> Brother back there, he said this when he come in. You know, when I, when I hear somebody start talking faith, I get excited. My heart starts to do this. When they tell me I'm fixing to move up here, I'm, I'm being called here, Pastor. And you know what? Hey, when they, but I'm going to share something with you. I'm not, I'm not pulling. I want you to obey God. But look here, I want a man to, 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 to have that unction and to be able to step out in faith. When I hear faith, I, I, something does something to me. When I hear somebody say, I don't know how it's going to work out, but bless God, I'm going to step. I thought, man, you're in the right, you talking to the right one here, honey. I'm not going to put water on your flame. I'm going to say, whoosh, whoosh. you know what's going to happen? I'm going to put water on, I mean, not water, I'm going to put, I'm going to, whoosh. Fan that flame because why? Because here's what's going to happen when you step on faith. You're going to step up and it's going to look like you're falling and all of a sudden. Oh, there's ground there. It looked like a drop off there for a second. It looked like I was fixing to fall, Brother Michael. Bless God when I hit the ground, though, I hit the ground. You hear me? Mm. Oh, and now I get confidence. All right, Lord, I know. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That's what God honors is faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Amen. Abraham went into a land he sojourned in. He left the land that he was in, and he left the land going to another land where God told him, and he couldn't see nothing except what God told him. But everywhere he went, he had favor. Everywhere he went, he found favor. Everywhere, he even went to one place and lied about his wife being his sister. And man, look here, that man was about to take that woman and it brought a whole curse. God cursed that whole place and you better let her go. Touch my wife see what happens to you. Touch my wife and see what happens. Amen. Amen. So I want to say this. I want to give you a chance to worship in your tithe and the offerings today and give you a chance to, to obey God. You ever heard that song, Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is? I'm going to change that saying right now. Your heart's going to go where your money is. You don't believe me? Okay. Work for 20 years or work for 10 years, save up your money and go buy you a new truck. See where your heart's at. See what happens when scratch gets on that thing. 
You're going to be ready to fight. You're going to be ready to throw them down. You're going to be ready to wring their neck. You're going to be ready to call the law and everything to get that thing fixed. Am I right? Because you done slave for 10 years to save money to get it. I'm not telling you not to. What I'm saying is, is your heart's going to follow your money. Because this, I'm going to share this one thing with you, and then I'm going to close because I can feel this. Now watch. You say, preacher, you got to explain this. I'm going to explain it right here. I'm going to show you. This is going to, it's going to change your life. What I preach to you, I live with everything that's in me. You can ask anybody.